Hi, so now we're going to be looking at the law of conservation of matter and energy. This is super important. We're going to be revisiting it multiple times this year. If you remember back to your basic early science classes, one of the things you learned was that matter is neither created nor destroyed. It's one of Newton's laws of thermodynamics and it governs chemistry as well. In any physical change or chemical reaction, mass is conserved. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. When we're talking about conservation of mass or mass being conserved, what we're really saying is the mass you start with has to equal the mass you end with. It's conserved across the reaction. In any chemical or physical process, energy is also neither created nor destroyed. Let's look at this in terms of mass. Here we have a reaction. We have two solutions, one in a test tube inside the beaker, the other one in the beaker itself. If we tip the beaker upside down, it allows the two solutions to mix. If we look, the mass at the beginning is equal to the mass at the end. So our reactants yield our products and the masses are completely equal. Notice there's a stopper in the flask and this meant that even if a gas was produced, none was going to escape so we could still account for its mass. Likewise, if we look at conservation of energy in a chemical reaction, if we have a chemical system that would be our reaction itself, it holds a certain amount of energy. And in the surroundings around that reaction, there is also a certain amount of energy. Once we complete the reaction, we might have more energy in the system than it started with, but that energy came from the surroundings. The total energy does not change. We can pull energy into the system from the surroundings. This is called an endothermic reaction. In this example, the energy of the reactants and the products increases while the energy of the surroundings decreases. However, once again, the total energy does not change. This would be an endothermic reaction where our reactant is combining with energy to form our product, which now has more energy than the system started with. So a good example, if 10 grams of methane and 5 grams of oxygen are reacted, how many grams of carbon dioxide and water will be produced? So this is a classic combustion reaction. We're saying we're starting with 10 grams of methane and 5 grams of oxygen in our reactants. How many grams will we get in our products? So 10 plus 5 gives us 15. That means if we have 15 grams of reactant, we have to end with 15 grams of product because mass must be conserved. We'll do more practice with this in class. I'd like you to try these four changes. I want you to determine if they're physical or if they are chemical. Ripping a piece of cloth burning a piece of cloth, melting a candle, burning a candle wick. So for A, ripping a piece of cloth, that would be a physical change. For B, burning a piece of cloth, that would be a chemical change because burning is combustion. C, melting a candle, that would also be a physical change because melting is a phase change and phase changes are always physical. And lastly, burning a candle wick. Burning would be an example of combustion. So this would be a chemical change. So between these two lessons, we've talked about chemical and physical properties, intensive and extensive physical properties, chemical and physical changes, and the law of conservation of mass and matter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back in class.